This video is about bouncers. Bounce. What's up everyone? We're back with another look at render optimization in Blender and you might have been able to tell from the rowdy intro that it's about bouncers. Hopefully. Anyway, I'm going to jump straight into Blender and we're going to have a look first at the scene that we'll be using for benchmarking today, which is of course the Italian scene. Um, there'll be a link in the description for this to get it from Blender's website if you want to follow along at home. Let's go have a look at the render properties panel in Blender, which is where the settings we'll be mucking with today actually live. So we go to render properties in Blender, light paths, and we're only going to be playing with max bounces. So you can see here we've got the total number of bounces allocated to the renderer. So what that means is light rays in cycles get fired from the camera into the scene and then they bounce all around and then cycles calculates the color of each pixel based on what those light rays bumped into. And we can control how those bounces are allocated. So we can allocate bounces to diffuse. That means, you know, anything that's just like not shiny, glossy, anything that's got a mirror-like quality to it that reflects things. Transmission, so that's going through something. Volume, which we're not doing, that's fog or mist. And then transparent, so things like glass. Now, I'm only going to be playing with two of these settings today. That's going to be the total and the diffuse. So basically what I did, and I did it the right way using science, is I collected a whole bunch of data. So let's go look at that now. So what we're gonna be doing is changing the number of bounces and seeing how that affects render times because, well, I've been seeing a lot of people doing videos in which they include like a five second tip on how to reduce render times by reducing the number of bounces. That's what we're gonna look at. So as you can see from this graph, we have number of total bounces going across the bottom small to big and render time up the vertical axis from small render time up to slow big don't like render time and what's immediately obvious from this graph is it's got this big incline and then it levels off there's a knee in the graph here and then not much happens which is kind of interesting because it suggests that if you go from four bounces up to 12 which is the default for this scene by the way it doesn't look like it costs you any render time conversely if you wanted to save render time with this scene your choices are pretty much well anything under four so you'd have to reduce your bounces from 12 down to maybe three so that's like a factor of four or two which is even more and you might be tempted to think, yeah, okay, let's do that. All right, so we did that. Let's have a look at what it looks like. So first up, let's look at one bounce. And you don't have to really be too much of a professional in graphics to know that that doesn't look right. So with only one bounce, the light goes into the scene, bounces once, and then it has to find something that's illuminated or it returns pretty much black. And we can see here, this is supposed to be a transparent door. I would say it's more like, you know, it's kind of got this pattern to it so you can't really see directly through it but it lets light through. So this door is meant to be sort of semi-transparent. You can see that it's mostly black and the reason for that is if I switch back into Blender you can see why that is. So if we go into the scene we can see this is the partition I was talking about. There's the window behind it and if we have a look behind it there's a wall. So what actually happens is light comes through through the glass bounces this wall and that's it. It's had its one bounce and then it can't get back out again and find anything illuminated. So it returns something close-ish to black. So that's a problem. So one bounce looks like it's actually not that much use. So let's try two. Two looks a little bit better. We've still got some strange artifacts up in here though. We've got these little black areas again where the light probably bounced once, twice, but then still couldn't find anything illuminated to add some light to that area. And so we've got these little black streaks. Similar kind of weird stuff going on up there as well. So let's go to 12 which is the total number of bounces to look like what it should look like according to the artist that created the scene. So you can see here, very, very different. You can see the line of the ceiling through there and it looks a lot, lot brighter as well. So now we want to ask ourselves a question like how do we actually save time but make the scene look the way that we want it to? Because it doesn't look so simple anymore. Just reducing bounces introduces a whole bunch of complications. So first of all, maybe we could just render with one bounce or two bounces and then just correct it in post. I mean, I'm in DaVinci Resolve right now, so how about we try, let's just use two bounces because it's a little bit better and I'll compare that to the one with, let's just say 12 for now. So I should be able just to increase the brightness if the problem is that we've just not got enough light because there's not enough bounces. But there is another problem. So I'm gonna stick my magnifier glass on and show you the waveforms. So we can see here the waveform for those two images side by side. So on the left, we have two bounces. On the right, we have 12. Same thing on the left, two on the right, 12. So this part of the waveform is the transparent sort of sliding door, which is this element in the scene. 
and you can see that it's actually very different. In the 12 bounce render versus the 2 bounce render, you can see there's quite a difference in the color, and in fact you can see on the waveform, with 12 bounces, it's separate from the background, whereas with two, it's kind of a similar luminosity, and that's a big problem because we can't just increase brightness because we're gonna increase the brightness of the other elements of the scene, which are around about the same brightness as it as well, and that changes how the scene actually looks. So we can't just make the scene brighter because what we've got is a difference in shape rather than just the whole shape being shifted down. It's actually got a different structure and that's a lot harder to correct. So we're kind of stuck. Even if you get really fancy and start trying to select things, like I could say, all right, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get fancy. I'm gonna put my qualifier on in DaVinci Resolve. I'm then gonna pick this area and then I am going to just make that area brighter. So I'm gonna offset that, I'm gonna bring it up. The problem we have is we, we still can't get a match between these two waveforms, which is ideally what we'd like to have. In fact, doing that kind of distorts everything. So that's a non-starter really, so we're gonna undo that. What options do we have left to us? Well, there is actually a clue. If we go back to the data, there's a clue about what's going on with the rendering engine telling us that there might be an opportunity for us to optimize the scene and still make it look reasonably close. We won't get it exactly because the problem isn't, for example, that the scene is too dark and there's not enough light. It's that the distribution of light itself is different because we haven't let enough bounces happen. So you'll notice the knee in the graph I was talking about is around about four bounces and something curious happens at that point. There is no increase in render time. That suggests that, okay, when we get to four bounces, that's probably enough because the computer's not really doing much more work, otherwise it would be increasing its render time. So if we go back to the scene and we say, okay, what do I want to fix? Well, I wanna fix the fact that there's not enough bounces that can get through a semi-transparent object, a translucent object. And that is controlled in Blender by transmission and transparency. So rather than turn those bounces up, what I'm gonna do is turn the diffuse bounces down and still clamp it at four bounces. So four seems like the right amount. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna only allow one diffuse bounce because, well, rule of thumb, if you look at any of the RTX games which use real-time ray tracing, they only really use one diffuse bounce. So I'm gonna try that as kind of my first attempt and I'm gonna let the other bounces be devoted to transmission, transparency, and glossy if it's needed. So let's have a look at what that looks like. Okay, so on the left, we have a scene which was rendered with one diffuse bounce, and the rest were devoted to transmission, transparency, and glossy. And on the right, we've got a scene which had four total bounces, but diffuse had a lot more bounces that could happen. And what you can tell straight away is these are pretty similar, and it's not just visual effect as well. If we go, and look at the waveforms, if I put my magnifier on again, you can see that the shape of the light from the partition is really, really close. So we're getting something that looks kind of similar to four bounces, which the data was telling us is around about the right amount. And final question is, well, that's great, James, but was it actually faster? So let's have a look at what the render time actually was. So the render time was one minute 30. So we went from one minute 50, four bounces, with something that looks reasonable, and the computer doesn't seem to do any extra work from there anyway, so we may as well go no more than four. But instead of one minute 50, it's now taking us one minute 30, which is actually kind of closer to two bounces. So when people are telling you, play with light bounces and you can reduce your render times, and they say that in two sentences, this is kind of the expanded version of what you have to do. So you have to be smart with how you allocate your bounces. So in this case, in a scene where we have, you know, a lot of collections of objects and there are semi-transparent things in the way, we want to make sure that we're devoting a fair amount to transmission, translucency, but we don't really need too much diffuse. We can get away with fewer diffuse bounces, but we need a few more bounces for transparency and translucency to make sure there's not weird artifacts in those elements in the scene. And that's pretty much it. So hope this has helped. Um, if it does, please share it with someone else and see you later.